to work. Hello, I'm Philip. I'm usually based in Berlin, and I do like computer stuff with uh, JavaScript and Python. And today I'm going to present on a robot framework. It's a project I discovered a little bit over a year ago. And um, yeah, that's the tagline I chose today is semicolon free testing. Uh, just lure you all in here. And um, this is how um, test cases in robot framework look like. Very simple, like edited with your text editor. It has a um, super simple column-oriented syntax. Um, the words uh, login should work and invalid login should not work are the uh, titles of the test and um, the lines beneath that are the step definitions that are executed line by line by the robot framework test runner. Um, there's also some variable replacements that are resolved out of the context uh, the test is running in. That's just for first impression. Um, robot framework is a generic keyword-driven test automation framework because that sounds so generic. Uh, I'm going to like, at least give you an impression of how that feels and showing lots of code and lots of uh, examples. Um, it's implemented in Python, uh, but Jython, the Python version that uh, runs on the JVM is fully supported uh, by the core team. So r extending robot framework with Python and Java is um, yeah, treated as a first class um, citizen in, by the core team. And um, yeah, as I said, it's sponsored by Nokia Siemens Networks. It's been um, open source for quite a few years now and it's licensed under Apache 2 license and it's free software. Um, yeah, it, even like two slides before, I showed you the test cases that are really simple, uh, text-based, and um, here are keywords that I can use um, to abstract away, um, yeah, like how how things work. Uh, here, for example, are two uh, three step definitions that uh, I can use to add an item to a cart to confirm an order, and those call the Selenium library underneath so that from my test case, I don't have to uh, know, like, is that happening in a browser? I just tell the test is about adding an item to a cart and confirming that the user is logged in and how that works underneath. I don't want to specify in the test because that's not relevant to the test. Um, then Robot Frameworks takes uh, the same um, uh, same syntax to also allow um, to abstract a weight test so you can have higher order keywords that are simply keywords I can see here this is a higher level keyword um, that takes arguments and you can really think of the keywords as function calls that's what they essentially are um, this keyword takes a username and a password function so I can use it in this test um, to log in as a valid user and valid password and then I state, okay, the user should be logged in. Um, and how that works is like handled in the keyword. And I can then stack those keywords um, at different abstraction levels uh, upon each other. And um, yeah, so I have very high level tests that specify um, general workflows and underneath I have uh, keywords that deal with the fiddly details of how the implementation actually works, like what, for example, the uh, login URL is and how the field names are called. Um, Robot Frameworks uh, allows us to um, tag certain every test case and test suites and um, so I can select which uh, test cases I want to run uh, now, for example, um, in this test suite, this is the whole test suite, it just has a setting uh, there that, that's optional. Um, I'm setting the tag story 52. Uh, if I'm maybe in an agile environment and I've, all my user stories have numbers, um, then I can um, like execute all stories that are relevant uh, 
um, just by including them, selecting them by a tag, or I can um, say, okay, if a, a, a test case that's tagged with work in progress, if that fails, that's not critical. Uh, please don't don't fail the build because I'm still iterating on that. Um, that comes in really handy if I want to execute like these two tests, or maybe just run regression tests and fail the build. Then, um, if a really critical thing happens, um, as you've seen before, there are variables uh, that have like different scope uh, in terms of like global test suite specific and test case specific. Uh, I can just define them here or can read them in from the command line or from a resource file or the environment um, or specify them on the command line. This is uh, super uh, helpful to um, like switch between different implementations. Maybe during the one run I want to test my application against a um, software emulation of a third party service and then in the next uh, run I want to use it against the real service, although that's slower, but I want to f see if that uh, works together. Um, yeah, and Robot Framework unifies like all the, like, the, the popular testing styles that are out there. Um, we've already seen the, the keyword-driven thing, where it just executes the stuff sequentially. Um, you can use Robot Framework to do the behavior-driven development stuff that's been popularized uh, in the Ruby world. Um, like um, on the lower side you see uh, the keyword that has the name I log in as username with password password and that's also a high level keyword um, but without the classical argument it's uh, just replaced uh, with the variables so I can call it from here. And um, there's no regex stuff going on because if you ask me, that's not really necessary in the um, step definitions. And um, yeah, the special words given and then uh, are just omitted by a robot framework when executing so you can make your tests um, yeah, sound a little bit English friendly. Um, then there's data-driven testing um, for example, you have like this data validation problem, maybe a credit card number, maybe a postcode, you have like a thousand definitions, okay, this is correct, this is not correct, and if this input is, then this error message should be given, and you have them maybe in an Excel file. And you want to just run one parameterized test with all the different values, and then you can do that uh, specifying a test template that's just the a parameterized uh, keyword we've seen before, and um, like specify the values uh, one after another. Um, yeah, all the test cases take the test template above and execute. Um, there's setup and tear down, as in every framework, um, both at test and at suit level, and they make it really easy to keep the test focused. Like with the introductory example, um, I don't in the specific test, I don't care whether uh, what the actual valid username or the valid password is, as long as it is a valid user and a valid password. I just want to specify like the two conditions I'm testing for, and not um, yeah, everything else. So I can keep the test focused um, there and let the context handle. Um, yeah. If the user is logged in, if the database server has been started, if the application has been deployed to the application server, whatever. Um, so here's another even more focused example. Um, maybe I'm like have, I don't have a have a web shop that sells something, and um, I want to make sure that the postcodes are validated correctly. And um, given I select the destination uh, Germany, then the postcode one zero one one seven should be valid. And um, in this example, I don't know which which page I'm on. Uh, are there items in the shopping cart? Has the user needed to um, add payment details as the user logged in? Maybe that's a step after that. Is the database running? I don't know about that. But I let the, the context provide that information for me. Um, Robot Framework comes with a module system that's very similar to the Python one. Um, so all tests. Um, 
are, um, so for example, the invalid login tests down here are automatically in the login suit. And that's um, all the keywords in this uh, init text file are available to it. And because the login suit is nested in the web suit, um, all the keyword definitions uh, one level above are also defined, and I can call them. So, um, yeah, maybe in the in the web uh, suit I define, okay, you need to start a browser, start the Selenium server, um, set these few variables, and then down here I can just use them without, uh, with, with just dropping the test in the correct folder, and all the context is there. Um, I can import, the, the resource statement is really like an import in like any language out there. Um, so I have for the invalid and the valid login uh, test suites, uh, I have a common resource called login txt uh, where all the definitions I'm using are included. Um, so this stacking of um, keyword definitions allows for really powerful abstractions and not just just one abstraction between um, your system under test and your high level tests, um, but you can stack them upon another. For example, you have the developers write the low level uh, interface to the, the software under test, and on top of that, you have like a descriptive um, semantical um, domain specific language that describes your, your software kind of like. Maybe page objects even fit in there. Um, on top of that, you build the tests, and then you can optionally f add, uh, fill, uh, yeah, fill the, the tests with test data so they get executed over and over. Um, there are rich HTML exports. They look like this. Um, this is a project of mine, and you can jump right in them. and. And there are, this one, the, uh, the reports, and this is the error log. We can like really dive into, okay, this test needed a setup, and it's setting up all the databases, and start starting the Selenium servers. And um, if I reload that, how does it work? Yeah. There are screenshots I wanted to show you. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can drill down into your test cases and really see what's happening. Uh, there's lots of detail output. Um, so now that magical things floating uh, above you, but um, how can you? integrate that, and I think it's a really, really easy to, to use that. Uh, if you're using Python, you can like pip install it. Uh, it's called Robot Framework. It's on the Python package index. Uh, if you're using Java, you just download the jar file from the project's website, and then call it with PyBot and give it the uh, directory with your tests in. Um, there's an IDE that lets you, like, Built and I use it just for refactoring uh, those tests, so we can like extract keyword and move things around and uh, have auto completion. So you can probably even set uh, non-developers in front of these tests uh, and give them the IDE. Um, there's a uh, project on uh, Google Code that allows you to use Excel files because it's the same column-oriented syntax, and you can use them like both in part of the, the same project, you can mix and match. Those are Excel files that provide the test data, and then, you know, like the normal test files or HTML tables um, providing the real tests. Uh, it supports out-of-the-box uh, tab-separated, comma-separated um, values, so you can just export your test cases from anywhere. You like it supports HTML tables because that's like a uh, very common data format and restructured text. That's a documentation thing in the Python world. Um, there's a Jenkins plugin that's really useful um, and draws like graphs how your tests perform. Um, now, if you want to extend um, Robot Framework in a way that you want to reach into your code from um, the keyword level stuff, uh, you just create a class 
and um, give it, have it make it have uh, public functions um, that are named somehow and then load it in the class path and then you can call it from there. I have a slightly, this is how, how it works if you want to call Python code from the, um, from robot framework, you just add that class somewhere in the, your path, class path in Java, then call the library framework, import that, and then you can use the method add two numbers, that's like this one, and um, that's about it. You don't need to implement any interfaces or load it some special way. Make sure it's in class path and then um, that works. So here's also variables um, you can then assert on. Yeah, then um, there's a library. So all, all the plugins that uh, provide like special keywords in robot framework called libraries. And there's a remote library that uses XML RPC underneath. Uh, so you can hook into any system or subsystem that provides uh, as an XML RPC library. And I think that's, um, you can totally see why, um, I, at least that's, that's my impression how Nokia Siemens um, developed that. Um, because I can imagine they have like, um, the requirement to like start a few servers here and then dial into them via yes, okay um, via SSH or Telnet and then spin up stuff here and then test against that here and um, all these different systems um, are really good orchestrated with the robot framework. So um, for Python, Ruby, .NET, Clojure, Java, and Perl, there are client libraries available that you can directly plug into your system if that's written in one of those languages and um, everything else, if there's X an XML RPC library available, that will work. Um, there's a Selenium library. Um, it's API complete, it works, uh, it's battle proven. They are releasing continuous, uh, uh, continuously new versions. Um, that's like a great uh, documentation for that. We can see all the keywords. This is probably the complete um, Selenium 1 uh, API um, with all documentation. So they take documentation really seriously. And um, that helps a lot, especially with all the, the kinky stuff. Um, documentation, screenshot in reports, uh, comes out of the box and it works. And it, Selenium uh, server jar is included in the, the Python package, so you don't even need to download that. If you want to, you can specify which Selenium server jar to use on the command line. Um, this is fork of that, the Selenium 2 library that uses the WebDriver API um, that aims to be uh, keyword API compatible, so you can swap out your, in case you have any old robot framework tests lying around. And um, that's work in progress, but uh, people on the mailing list are reporting success stories with using the Selenium 2 library. Um, the GUI libraries, and here you can see like, it's not just about web testing, it's testing those uh, heterogeneous systems that consist of like thousands of different environments. And um, so you can test like Java Swing uh, GUI applications, Eclipse, SWT applications. There's a plugin for uh, auto it button. I, I'm not, not a Windows guy, so you can automate good stuff there. There are networking libraries, Telnet, SSH, SFTP, they come bundled, I think, and HTTP. And um, built-in libraries for all the stuff you need, like popping up dialogues uh, for maybe you have manual tests that need to, where someone needs to flip a switch on a physical device, um, so you can instruct them and integrate them into the uh, development process or the testing test run, and um, yeah. Operating system includes stuff as um, creating directories, creating files. There are libraries for manual testing, for databases, for JDBC compatible databases, so you can like, create stuff and ask for stuff. And as I showed earlier, it's really, really easy to like write those two or three um, integration points with your software. Um, 
yeah, that, that's about it. Uh, one more thing, there's a great, where do I have it? Um, great user guide that goes into great detail, like where I store my slides from. Um, what robot framework is, how it works, and every little uh, thing that it can do. Oh, there's Iron Python. So there seems to be, there's an ongoing effort to get uh, .NET supported as a, a third, first class language. And um, the project is very active and responsive, like the mailing list is uh, pretty active. They are twittering and uh, responding to email. And um, yeah, if you, any of you want to discuss this, ask questions, uh, maybe now, maybe later, uh, come and find me. I'm really happy to talk about it. That's it. Questions? Um, not in the core. So it's probably, you can probably run multiple processes um, and I think there's even a utility like to later merge the test reports so you get one for all the parallel executions. Um, but th they had uh, support for parallel, parallel keywords um, but that's been removed because it wasn't uh, reliable. Yeah, then, I mean, e even if, if you think that's, that's a bad idea, I'd love to hear about it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a representative of, of them, I'm just an enthusiastic user. Um, what drawbacks do you think it has, not having used it? Um, yeah, <laughs> I think it's um, that it is a programming language, uh, but tries not to be one. Um, that's kind of a difficult uh, thing because sometimes you need for loops and sometimes you need like if clauses and uh, they are there and they are ugly and I'd rather write that in a normal programming language. But that could also be an advantage if you like take away all the, the heavy stuff uh, people can do crazy stuff with. <laughs> but depends on the viewer, yeah. That's it, and um, thank you. Thank you.